Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. 98.3 The Vibe Morning Special Edition Image TV Podcast. And we've got Deidre DeGier in the house with us. And I tell you, things are electrified right now. I'm just feeling real good. Deidre, it is a pleasure to have you back on The Image Show and now The Image TV Podcast. I'm happy that you have energy, Bobby, and I'm happy to be here. I've got plenty of energy, Deidre, and uh, when we get out on that basketball court and play that game of one-on-one, I'm going to show you exactly what an experienced basketball, former basketball player that I really was. But that's besides the point. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an opportunity for me <laughs> to either show grace or not show grace. And I'm going to show grace. And I'm going to allow Bobby to believe that it is possible for him to defeat me on anybody's court on any given day. Okay, I'm like, going to do that for him. <laughs> just for you. First of all, let's just, for those of you out there uh, who may not know Deidre DeGere, our guest on the show this morning, uh, she has a wealth of credentials. Deidre, I think it would be best if you introduced yourself because uh, you have credentials from here all the way down the street. So tell us who you are. You know, I, I'm a community advocate. I am one of those folks. I grew up in Mississippi. I went to high school in Oklahoma and I came to Iowa to go to Drake. And I grew up in a family that taught me that I was not born on this earth for me. I was born on this earth to add value. Whatever God had in me, it was my job to push it out there into the atmosphere. And so I'm trying to do that every single day. Um, and, you know, it's just, I'm a daughter first. I'm a child of God first. Um, and to, from my vantage point, no other congenital matters. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we've talked a lot about the Evelyn K. Davis Center for Working Families. We've talked about the Financial Empowerment Center, and we talked about some of these big uh, Des Moines kept secrets. Uh, I want to kind of get into the Financial Empowerment Center, mm -hmm. FEC. Uh, you are the director there. You've been doing a marvelous job. Uh, there's been a wealth of people talking about it here in the Des Moines community. Uh, can you just tell us a, a little bit about it? So Financial Empowerment Center is a place where people can go to help improve their personal financial situation. You know, we have experienced a lot of challenges in 2020. People had high hopes for their finances. They knew exactly what they were going to do with their money and when they were going to do it for this year. But, you know, a pandemic coupled with a derecho, coupled with unemployment, coupled with um, just COVID in general, the and the mental health crisis that we see across our community um, has has been damaging and daunting. But there is hope. You know, over the course of this pandemic, believe it or not, we've had people that have increased their credit scores by more than a hundred points. Um, wow. We've had folks deplete their debt um, by 40, 50 percent. We've had people increase their savings, and so. Um, if there is ever a time to improve your personal financial situation, I said this earlier in the pandemic, I would encourage people to do it now, even though um, the bills may not be adding up. You may, you may be living paycheck to paycheck or trying to figure out how you can get rental assistance. Our coaches are very well prepared to help people overcome these challenges. It's not going to be easy but it's going to be worth it. And at the fi Financial Empowerment Center, we're doing that. And we do it at no cost. You know, we've been lucky to get the county to invest in, in this program. And so as a result, we were able to add more coaches because remember before we only had one. David was, you know, holding it down for all yeah. of us, right? And, and now we've added three additional ones. And so if there is anything that I can share, like 2020 does not have to be the year of despair. Will, will 2020 have despair in it? Yeah. Will, will it have loss in it? Yeah. But I think we can have that loss and we can also have some gain at the same time. Because sure. I myself have lost and I'm sure you have. And, and, and I've been challenged through this whole thing. But, you know, I consider myself an athlete. You, I think you call yourself an athlete. And, and, and you know, we, we've been conditioned. I, I, think, I, I think you're a former athlete. But... <laughs> There's no proof of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you proof. I'll give you proof. Yeah, okay. But 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 here's the thing. Like we've been conditioned as athletes to do whatever we can to win, to do whatever we can to overcome. 
Um, no matter how much we're out of breath, no matter how much we may be in pain, we, we've been conditioned to do that. And, and, and so many of us in different facets of our life have been conditioned to do that. And, and I think I, I just want to, I don't, we came here to talk today about financial education and whatnot, but honestly, I, I just want people to be hopeful, be hopeful in the midst of this despair and, and to believe that you don't have to do it on your own. You do not have to do this on your own. You're probably thinking, I, I don't know what to do with my money. I can't talk to anybody, anybody about my money right now. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm stuttering on your behalf right now. Like, I get you. I get you. Amen. But, but there is a space for improvement. And there are people out there that can be helpful and that can add value, not take advantage of you. You know, not, not make you feel less than, not make you feel stupid, but make you feel like you're a human being. That's right. And I can vouch for that, Deidre. Um, you know, you talk about the value of the Financial Empowerment Center, uh, the Evelyn K. Davis Center, the opportunities, the programs that are out there that are available. I am a living witness of this, and I keep telling people all over central Iowa, any, anywhere that I see people, to go in and take advantage of these programs. Like mm -hmm. you said, they're free. Mm -hmm. And this ties right in uh, with our uh, Image TV podcast and the criminal justice that we're actually talking about and getting into because this is justice, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yeah, it is. What economic justice. Economic it's economic justice. justice because so many of our folks have been carved out of the economic process. Um, I mean, our people have been carved out of the economic process. We, we were shipped over here to work for free. The epitome of our existence in this country was us working for free. Wow. And we've been trying to gain economic footing ever since then. And it has been challenging. And so now I'm saying, you know, with, with everything going on, with, with, with COVID, with, with, with COVID literally putting us on our knees, <laughs> nothing but God could do that. And, and I just believe that there is more to come for all of us. And we just have to be hopeful and we have to endure um, even in the midst of our trials and tribulations. And I know it sounds hard to do that um, because it is, but I believe that if we can do that, man, the best is yet to come for us. I agree. And you know, speaking of doing that, uh, there was an event this past weekend that actually uh, represented that yeah uh i forget the name of it it was the the sisters girl talk they did a sister soul fest sister and there soul was fest. over 40 female black owned businesses wow at union park and i oh, didn't get goodness. a chance to get out there um because i had a few other obligations that day but man i was just like there in spirit encouraging others to go because it was it was a phenomenal thing to just look at on Facebook Live. I've never seen that many female black owned businesses in, in the city of Des Moines. And I think they came from all over. I think they came from all over uh, the state. But I mean, the, the women who put that on, kudos to you. Keep doing that work. It's encouraging, it's inspiring. I mean, when, when you don't have a job and, and you need to make ends meet, you do what a lot of those women are doing out there. They're following their dreams, they're following their passions, and they're getting paid to do it. That's right. And Deidre, you know, every time you come into my presence, you know what I think of? No, real talk. A winner that can I, beat no, you in basketball. No, That's no, what you not think. That. <laughs> but I, I think about that time that you almost became our Secretary of State. <laughs> really, real talk. You was just a hair inch away from taking out Paul Pate, and you already uh, made some history in that, in the fact that uh, you were the first female, uh, I think, first African-American female to even run and, and, and to first, make it first african-american run for a statewide office okay and nominated for well to win the nomination actually and i'm going to tell you i think that that is huge and you get a lot of uh great notoriety around here i mean you, you when you hear deidre DeGier, it's always a positive uh it's always about uh getting out there voting uh, making sure that you're utilizing all your rights uh, mm -hmm. programs that are offered for people uh, that are in need. So I think the Des Moines community uh, really is <clears throat> at an asset to have you here and uh, doing what you're doing. I appreciate that. And speaking of rights, I'm wearing 
my Know Your Rights shirt. If you can see me, Know Your Rights shirt. Know Your Rights. Know Your Rights. This was done by um, one of our cohorts for African American Leadership Academy. Um, and this was specific to your rights as it relates to interaction with police officers, but um, there are other rights that we have that I would like to talk about right now, and that one right is the right to vote. And we have an election coming up, and when we think about all of the challenges that we're dealing with as individuals, when we think about all of the circumstances and we feel like we, we, we can't do anything about it, I know one thing we can do. What's that? And that's participating in this elections process. That's right. Um, and it's going to make all the bit of difference because we're not just voting for president of the United States. We're voting for a senator, a U.S. senator that will go to Washington and represent us. Someone who hasn't been in existence right now, the person who's there, has not been thinking about the best interests of all Iowans. We have an opportunity to send people to Congress. We have an opportunity to elect our local officials, people that are going to impact us from the federal level all the way down to basic state functions. Um, and, 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 and the way that we get around all of these challenges that we're dealing with is that we show up and we vote, but we vote for people who have our best interests at heart. Yes. We may not know all their policies. We may, may not know everything about their background. We may not know their voting history. But, but, but you know people. Sure. You know how to listen to them and, and, and gather. Hmm, do they get me? Sure. Do they understand my challenges? Because of when leaders don't understand our challenges as individuals, it makes it very, very difficult for them to overcome, help us overcome our challenges. When, when they don't understand that there are systemic barriers in our way, those systemic barriers don't exist for them, and so they're going to remain in our way. That is correct. If they can't see our problems, they're not going to resolve them. So identify with people who get your problems. Now, mind you, none of these fit folks are perfect. They're That's just right. like you, Bobby. They're just like me. You know, they, they've all fallen short at some point in time in their life. They've all made mistakes at some point in time in their life. But did they learn from them? It's the most important part. And <clears throat> do they give second chances? Uh, we talk about uh, the image show. We talk about reentry. We talk about the Financial Empowerment Center. Mm -hmm. We've got to include that the, the whole fact that you guys are actually, well, the, the Financial Empowerment Center is supporting uh, the reentry uh, process because most of these people that are coming out of prison, and I work at the Evelyn K. Davis Center, a lot of them come to see me, mm -hmm. and a lot of them just come for help. And they're getting the help that they need because of these programs. Uh, a lot of people coming out, they've been taking advantage of the nonprofit boot camps, the mm -hmm. for profit boot camps. A lot of people now are looking to start their own business. Yeah. Well, the Financial Empowerment Center, I think, is probably the only place. Uh, I don't know, in the Midwest or in the country that offers programs like that for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, you know, it's a challenge to be able to offer something for free and it be of quality. But I think that there are people are worth it. I think that um, if we are expecting people, when we're talking about people who have uh, been incarcerated, we're expecting them to leave prison, leave whatever confinement they've been in, and come and add some value to our community, we got to meet them where they're at. That's right. You know, folks being locked up 20 years. That's right. They don't get what we get now. They That's don't right. understand what we understand now. Who's going to be there to to help them, help connect them to what society looks like, the, the, society, the society that they've been absent from for however many years, right? Like, I, that's important. Like, we, we, too many of our leaders have a very narrow vision of what success looks like. And I think it's important that, and when I say that, it means... They know what success looks like for the people they care about, for the people they see every single day. But they don't know what success looks like for people who they may not be familiar with, people who they may not encounter. And it doesn't make their vision bad. It just makes it narrow. And a narrow vision is not good for people. We need visionary leaders in leadership. We need people, if, if, they, if they don't have the experience themselves, we need them to be equipped to go and find folks that surround them, that, that, that ensure that we're not going to miss the boat no matter what. That's right. We're going to put people in place that are equipped to lead no matter what. And, and I think we, we got to think that way ourselves, right? Like, I want success for people like you and me. That's correct. 
But if you're successful and I'm successful and the white man down the street isn't successful, I'm not satisfied. I personally am not satisfied. That's right. If, if the white man down the street is successful, but the Latin, Latino next door to him ain't successful, I'm not okay with that. Yes, ma'am. We've got to figure out ways to help the least among us. And some people are not in a position to be able to do that. It doesn't make them bad people. It just makes them unequipped. And when you're unequipped, you got to make some decisions. Do you stay and sink this boat? Or do you leave and allow some captain to come and save the ship? I agree. Boy, couldn't have been said any better. Uh, now that we have you here with us, Deidre, I want to ask, do you know uh, when is the next nonprofit boot camp scheduled? So the next nonprofit boot camp will be this fall. And people can go to empowermoney.org, empowermoney.org, to register for that nonprofit boot camp. Um, and we also have a Spanish speaking boot camp that's coming up as well. We're excited about that. They can also go to our website to register for that one. But, you know, we, we, even though we're in the midst of this COVID challenge, we are not, um, stopping our service delivery. It's just happening virtually. So if you want to talk to one of our business coaches, if you want to talk to somebody about a nonprofit, or if you just want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one to talk about your own personal finances, you can still do that safely. Um, and all you have to do is just go to empowermoney.org or, or give us a call. You can schedule an appointment right online. If you were up at 3 o'clock in the morning, if you are listening to this at 4 a.m., you too can schedule a financial fitness appointment right now. Literally. Just go to empowermoney.org. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you're tuned in to 98.3 The Vibe Special Edition Sunday Morning Image TV Podcast. And we're here with Deidre DeGier is in the house. Coming up next, we're going to speak with Ken Silver. We're going to get back into the criminal justice and so forth and whatnot that we've been into uh, throughout all these different episodes. But Deidre, uh, I want to say that, you know, you did a pretty good job here on the show this morning. Uh, I'll give oh, you an A. Thank I'm you. I'm going to give you an A for that. I thought maybe you. you were going to come in and, you know, uh, probably be graded about a C or a D, but mm -hmm. yeah, but I give you an A. You did a I'm good job. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm hoping to give you an A when we get on this court. You're not going to get the win, <laughs> but I'll give you an A for you effort. Really, you really do not believe that you can beat me. I know you don't believe that in your heart. I, I hope not. <sighs> then you really don't know me, Bobby Pate. <laughs> We're going to go to a break. Ladies and gentlemen, Deidre DeGier, Robert Pate, <laughs> Image TV Podcast. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, right. you do an excellent job. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. You're tuned in to 98.3 The Vibe Special Edition Sunday Morning Show and the Image TV Podcast. Those of you joining us by YouTube, we want to thank you. Those of you joining us by radio, 98.3 The Vibe, we want to thank you. Facebook as well. I also want to encourage you to get out there and subscribe on YouTube once you have seen this podcast and you feel that it's something that you like and is of interest. Back with Ken Silver. My co-host Ken, it's back to it's great to have you back with us. Well, I'm glad to be back here. You had a really exciting interview with a lady uh, earlier in the program. Uh, tell us about that. Oh, Deidre Desir, she's a one of a kind. Uh, well, first of all, uh, we're talking about justice in Podcast Five, and I feel that uh, the Financial Empowerment Center is justice. You know. Uh, all that they're giving back into the community, the things that they're doing. Um, you heard her talk about a lot of the stuff that's going on, and it's just a great uh, thing to talk about. It's it's good to always have good, uplifting people in here, and I think that the Financial Empowerment Center has done a great job in the Des Moines community through the Evelyn K. Davis well, Center. Well, she's a pretty busy lady, and we were fortunate enough to be able to work her in at the start of this uh, podcast today. 
and uh, it kind of interrupts our criminal justice uh, <laughs> train of thought, but I think it's ve well worthwhile. Uh, yes. Everybody needs to know how to do a better job of financial planning, and uh, that's what gets too many people in trouble. You know, it leads to, to problems, it leads to uh, interaction with the law enforcement, and it leads to uh, the justice system and, and the shortcomings of that. So uh, it was great to have her on, and uh, it kind of works in with what we're talking, so let's move on. Yeah, so in transitioning back, to criminal justice, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the problems that come with our justice system. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, is there a problem oh, with our yeah, justice system? There's a problem. Everybody knows there's a problem. Well, let's talk about it. Well, okay. Here's the situation. Ever since Adam brought sin into the world, we've had to live in an imperfect world, right? That is correct. I mean. Just tell, tell me something that is perfect well, outside of you and me. <laughs> I can't think of anything, Ken. Uh, when I was a young kid, I used to watch Michael Jordan play basketball, and I always thought he was just the perfect player. Yeah, and what was his shooting percentage? Oh, probably about maybe 80% on a great day from the field. Yeah, he didn't hit every shot, did he? That's right. Okay. Nothing was 100%, never. Uh, now... Could you tell us just a little bit about, uh, we talk about some examples of the injustice and the fact that we're not living in a perfect world. Well, I think, first of all, we've got to understand that the imperfection, the injustice affects everybody or puts everybody at risk that comes in contact with the legal, with the justice system. It's not just one group one sex, one nationality, whatever, anybody that subjects themselves to the justice system uh, has a risk of facing injustice. And so this should be of interest to all of us. And like I say, you know, nothing is perfect. Well, I, you can go out and buy a brand new car and pay $100,000 for it, and chances are you're going to have to take it back to the dealer and have something fixed within the next 30 days. So, uh, you know, doctors carry a lot of liability insurance, malpractice, because uh, we know that they're not perfect. As much training as they've had and as much experience as they get, they still make mistakes. Sure, uh, sure. You, you and I make mistakes. And that is correct. We're never going to admit it, but that's one of the things that does happen. So. We have to face the fact that it's an imperfect world. And along with that, our criminal justice system is imperfect. Now, having said all that, we've got to make sure that we continue to try to improve the system. We can't sit back and say, well, uh, it's imperfect. We've got problems with it. Uh, we're going to accept that and move on. It's been that way for 200 years. and. Uh, so let's just keep going the way it is, and uh, we're going to have a few people that uh, uh, that fall by the wayside, but that's uh, one of the prices we pay. You know, a guy told me a long time ago, and maybe I've told you this before, if you want to make sure you never convict an innocent man, you've got to let everybody go free. If you want to make sure you never let a guilty man go free. You've got to convict everybody. So somewhere in between is what we're going to try to do, and we're going to start taking a look at the steps involved in improving the criminal justice system. Oh, I think that that's wonderful. Uh, as being a man who stood uh, in the uh, justice system and in the uh, facilities and, and went through all the trials and tribulations, I think that this is very, very valuable. But I think that uh, we must also continue to work on improving what we have uh, oh, when it comes to justice. And know. in order to do that, we need to take a look at it step by step. What is it? And how do we go about improving it? You know, when we first started this podcast, we said we're going to operate on facts. We're not going to operate on hearsay. And so we're going to dig into the facts. And one of the first things we want to know is, how do we know there's a problem? We just said there's a problem, but how do we know that? What's telling us that there is a problem? 
Well, you know, first class, first uh, rate that uh, there's a problem, right? Yes, and I don't even know where to start. Well, turn on the TV. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, this is sad that we've got every station talking about riots and protests and people are unhappy. And, you know, this tells me there's a problem. Yes, When you've definitely. got people burning down stores and, and stopping traffic and shooting each other, that's a problem. And I think one of the things that's uh, helping fan the blaze is this coronavirus thing where people have been uh, cooped up. There's a lot of extra stress, mental problems, you know. Uh, how are we going to take care of our kids? Who's going to teach the kids? Uh, do we have to wear a mask? Are we going to shake hands? Are we going to sneeze on each other? All these things are adding stress. And I think uh, probably helping uh, show the problem, at least to the media. Yeah, and I think a lot of people have just flat out given up. I mean, if you look at some of these people walking down the streets now, their clothing that they're wearing, I mean, you can tell that they did nothing to prepare for their day. I mean, their day has just, it's just a fly-by-night. And you can see it in, in people's appearance right now. Well, when you get stressed out, what do you try to do? You try to relieve it in some way. And unfortunately, the way a lot of people try to relieve that stress is with uh, alcohol or drugs. And uh, the abuse, either one of those, leads you to the criminal justice system. So, yes. uh, again, you come in contact with it. And right now, we're going to blame part of it on what's going on with society. So, um, now, I'm going to tell you, most people, when there's a problem in our country, we automatically want to blame the one who is in authority. Oh, yeah. Or the, anybody else. Uh, however, sometimes that's true. Uh, sometimes it's not. From a spiritual perspective, us being men and women of God, we are to be led by the Bible, by the scriptures. Right. And uh, I think that if we could morally focus a little bit more on ourselves, on our spiritual growth, I think we'll find out that God comes into the picture and takes care of all the other things, the, the people that, who are in authority and whatnot. Oh, Would you agree? I, oh, I think you're entirely right. The problem is there's not that many people understand that. So we're going to go through some rough times. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But as we move on uh, next week, we're going to start getting into more and more of the meat of this whole thing because we know, yes, there's a problem. Yes. And it's we're in an imperfect world. We're going to try to improve on the imperfection. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we did was we decided, yes, we know there's a problem. Here's the facts that show us there is a problem. Uh, every day we hear horror stories about somebody who was in prison for 30, 40 years, and all of a sudden they did more investigation and find out that they're innocent. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's the height of injustice right there. How do you put a, a price on a man's life that you've wasted? Yes. So, and, uh, so I think when we say, how do we know there's a problem? We just proved there is. So we're going to go ahead next week and, and follow up on the rest of our steps uh, to try to come up with a solution to this whole thing. Now, another popular thing that we have going on in our country it appears to be uh, officers shooting, white officers shooting and uh, killing black men. What do you think about that? Well, I'm going to start a real argument right here. Uh, okay, let's hear it. Now, Ken, you know, I, I don't mind arguing with you. <laughs> you probably took lessons from my wife. <laughs> Go ahead, man, let's hear it. Okay, here's the thing. First of all, predominantly uh, police forces, whether by choice or not, um, pre predominantly white officers. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, uh, what you see on the news is white policemen shooting black people. 
white policemen shoot a lot of white people, but they don't ever get them on the television. And my, uh, my advice to everybody, I don't care what color you are, I've had run-ins with the police and law enforcement, and what it taught me was when they tell me to do something, I just do it. I don't run, I don't argue, I don't fight, I don't run off the mouth because that's not the time to plead your case. The reason we have courts and juries and lawyers, that's where you go to argue. Not when you're standing in the street and somebody's got a gun. So, uh, you know, those kind of things have been sensationalized and, and I don't mean to, to, to minimize the fact that we shouldn't shoot unarmed people, we shouldn't use excessive force and so on. I agree 100%, those things are wrong. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm not sure that uh, they're being publicized properly in the, in the, in the media. So anyway. And, and, and I agree, I agree with that uh, to an extent. Uh, I think personally that when we talk about injustice, uh, I think that rather it be a police officer, rather it be a pastor, Whoever it may be, if there is someone in authority, oh yeah, I who agree. who who blatantly Boy Scout leader, yeah, who 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 abuses that authority, that power, you know, I mean, you know, we look at police officers first of all. Uh, they are here to protect us. They're here to protect society. You know, if your little kid uh, gets injured or someone gets raped or you know some kind of tragedy happens. That's who we're supposed to call. That's who we're supposed to be able to trust. And when they display the behavior of uh, killing someone or, or intentionally hurting someone, rather it be white or black, it's wrong. We agree? I agree. And I think, uh, you know, what we have to concentrate on is there's, what, 98% of them good that don't do that? We've got 2% maybe that are causing problems. Yeah. What we're going to address here, well, how do we take care of the 2%? Yes, we need to address that. How do we do that, though? Well, tune in next week, and I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you're tuned in to 98.3 The Vibe Sunday Morning Show, Special Edition, Image TV Podcast. We've got Ken Silver, Robert Pate, and you're locked and loaded into nothing but love. We're going to ask that you tune in next time on The Image Show. As for now, it's a wrap. <laughs>